So let's start with uh, the low temperature units. So we have already our RTFG uh, unit able to produce uh, water or glycol water down to minus 12 degrees. But for temperature below this, this uh, limit, we have a new unit, the RTDF unit. It's a deep freezing unit. So it's able to satisfy any requirement for deep freezing application. Here you have a, a view of the unit. It's an air cooled chiller, as you can see, really similar to our traditional air cooled chiller with a semi hermetic screw compressor micro-channel condenser, EC fan. Uh, we have a stainless steel heat plate exchanger. We have, I would say, in front of the unit, the electrical cabinet, and we have, I would say, the control pump. For reaching this very low temperature, down to minus 30, I would say, we use, I would say, a refrigerant called NH3 or ammonia. This refrigerant, I would say, is uh, a low GWP refrigerant as well as a zero ODP refrigerant. This unit is called, I would say, a low charge unit, simply because we use component with low charge of refrigerant. This is a big advantage with this type of unit. For example, in this unit, we have only 70 grams of refrigerant per kilowatt of cooling. It means that a unit of 700 kilowatt has less than 50 kilo of refrigerant in the unit. On the top of that, if you consider that we have two different circuits with the unit, we really limit the risk with the refrigerant. As you can see here, the operating range of the unit is very wide. We can produce water between 0 and minus 30 degrees. Even if the unit is optimized for temperature below minus 12 degrees, we can produce water between 0 and minus 12 degrees with this unit and we can have outdoor air temperature up to 47 degrees Celsius. That means this unit fully satisfies the requirement for the European countries in terms of deep freezing application. This unit fully comply with eco design, and on the top of that, it has been designed to be shipped in container. So it can be shipped everywhere in the region in container. One of the most popular options with this unit is the heat recovery. Heat recovery system is very important if you want to recover the heat produced by the freezing system. The freezing system is operating 24-7. That means it rejects heat, I would say, most of the year. This heat can be reused, I would say, if you have a heating process with your, uh, with your cooling process. And we have two types of heat recovery system available with this unit. We have the total heat recovery system. This is on the refrigerant side, and you can recover up to 80% of the heat. On the other side, we have the partial heat recovery system. This is a recovery system based on oil recovery, and we can recover roughly 20% of the heat. You can reuse directly, I would say, this heat for the system at medium temperature, 35, 40 degrees, depending on the process. But if you need, I would say, higher temperature, for your heating process or for your heating requirement, you can combine this unit with a high temperature heat pump. On the other side of the boot, we have, I would say, our temp high temperature heat pump. You can see here we have our Exergy wrench. The Exergy heat pump is an industrial heat pump able to satisfy any requirement up to 120 degrees. So that means with this unit, you can satisfy most of the heating requirement in building, but also for process heating. The unit is available with different technologies, compressor technology and different refrigerant. So based on the temperature you want to reach, between 85 and 80 degrees, Exergy is the perfect solution for reaching this temperature. So for district heating application, process heating application, or for replacing high temperature boiler. Now if you have waste it, and you would like to reuse it, it's also possible with the Exergy unit. With the Exergy unit, you can source at high temperature, up to 47 degrees. So between 30 and 47, you can re recover the rejected heat and reuse it for heating purpose. As you can see here, this is an example of an existing chiller plant where you reject the heat through a dry cooler into the atmosphere. Instead of rejecting this, this heat in the atmos into the atmosphere, you can reuse it, you can connect an exergy unit through the system 
and we use it for producing water at 90 degrees in this example, but you can go up to 120 degrees. As already mentioned, I would say, combining deep freezing application or my freezing application with, I would say, heating application is a big advantage for the customer. The customer can increase the efficiency of the cooling and heating system and at the same time decreasing, I would say, its carbon footprint and its operating costs.